Hey guys, it's Melon. So, um, I'm doing this in the style of a Melanie video. If you haven't seen my Melanie Malone channel, go check it out. So, um, so Pippin has made a video about her childhood traumas. So, I decided to do one too. So, yeah. That's why the picture for this video is Sergio looking so frightened, like he's getting traumatized. Anyways, um, okay, where do I start? Mm, okay, first off, let's start with that one time when I was, I think, about five or maybe six Anyways, um, me and my family went to the movie theater. I forgot what movie we were watching, but before the movie started, um, there was a, um, trailer for this Jumanji movie, which is, so anyways, um, you, you probably all heard of Jumanji, so anyways, uh, so, the trailer for it, at some point, this gosh dang elephant popped up and trumpeted at the camera. And when I saw that, I heard it, I started crying and I had to be taken out of the theater room. That scared me to death. <laughs> yeah. I've actually hated the elephant trumpet since I was, like, three years old. That was one of my... F I think the elephant trumpet was my first ever misophonia trigger. The other ones came later. Yeah. Okay, and another thing that um traumatized me was... um I think it was around the same time... It was, um, my grandparents were at my house, and they were watching TV and stuff. Then all of a sudden came this ad. There was this ad that was supposed to, I think it was a political ad. Um, it had the Republicans and Democrats arguing. And they were represented by a donkey and an elephant making their sounds into the microphone and as you can already tell the elephant made me made my misophonia go haywire and yeah that that scared me so much i was crying and another thing is um oh yeah let's talk about um Things that happen at school. So, um, in kindergarten, a lot of bad things happen in kindergarten. I was triggered the most there. I mean, triggered the most from videos, but, but, um, triggered the most in general would have to be from fourth and fifth grade because of the stupid kids, the kids, like the classmates. Anyways, but in kindergarten, it was mostly videos that triggered me. Which is why I have, um, which is why I have a fear of videos being played in class for the class to watch. So, um, one time, um, I think they played this channel, like, two or three times. It's called, um, it's called Phonics Stories. And basically, they're like these little puppet things. Like, there's like puppets in a puppet show. And that are, they have these stories that teach about phonics. And like, we were learning about digraphs, like the H put at the end, C H, S H, blah, blah, blah. So, we were learning about that, and they would play videos to help us learn about it. And they played phonic stories to help us with that. And two of them, if I remember correctly, used the 
Gosh dang kids cheering sound. I don't remember. I think it was um the CH1 and the SH1. I don't remember what part in the SH1 had the kids cheer. But I do remember the CH1. It's when the girl near it was near the end when the girl said H will never trick me and then the sound came up. Yeah. <laughs> Because like there's an H character who likes to fool around with the other letters. I don't even remember what the stories were about, but I think it was about H being a trickster to everyone and playing mischief on everyone and blah blah blah. Yeah, that's why she said um H will never trick me. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Which yeah, I hate phonic stories because it it traumatized me when I was little. And oh my gosh, I remember now. Um so it was um from it was also from kindergarten. It was a video um they were playing a video about the five senses because we were learning about the five senses. See, hearing, smelling, touching, tasting. Yeah, that. And one of the videos they played in class, I don't I can't find the what chan I don't even remember what channel it was from, no matter how much I searched for it, but it looked a lot like Miss Rachel even though it wasn't Miss Rachel, but it looked a lot like it. It it had the same vibe to it. It had the it has a woman and she's talking about the five senses and the gosh dang kids cheering sound was somewhere around um near the beginning or something I don't know yeah like there was like a bunch of sound effects and stickers placed all around the video I can't seem to find the video anywhere I think it got deleted I don't know. But yeah, I clearly remember that time. And when we watched it in class, I started crying, and then at the end of the day, it was made even worse for me since um the teacher forced me to watch the video without crying. That's right, guys. They forced me to watch the video without crying. <sighs> Like every time I cried, they they'd go back to the beginning and play it again and again and again and again until I act normal. Seriously, this is one of the reasons why I kind of hate school. But I return to it and I'm trying to do better and better at this at it. At least now they're trying to accommodate it for me. They're trying their best to accommodate it for me and make school easier for me. But back then, it was normal, 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 normal. <sighs> Ableist. <sighs> Anyways. <sighs> um, another thing that they played in in class. Um, uh, what was it? There was like another thing that they played in. Oh my gosh, now I remember. They played this thing called um the Leapfrog. It was a Leapfrog movie, the Letter Machine Rescue Team. It had a purple thing named Buffter Buster. I don't remember. There was Burfter. Yeah, Burfter. I thought his name was Buster because of how they pronounced it. I don't know why. Anyways, <laughs> It's a purple thing who can shape shift into anything. There was this one scene where he turned into a train and there was the train whistle and I started crying. Oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah. And um also in the beginning of that same movie, um there was Lily singing to the tune of Are You Sleeping Brother John Butt? That part didn't bother me back then because I started having misophonia to nursery rhymes in like 2020 or 2021 around the time I turned 10. Yeah. But back then it didn't bother me, so anyways, 
Um, another thing that they played in class was, um, it, okay, so, it wasn't, like, a video, but it was I Ready. If any, ha, do you, you, like, um, any of you guys remember I Ready? If so, do you remember back when they used to have these, like, cheap flash animation lessons for, like, the preschool and kindergarten levels before they got to Plory and you? Like, it looks outdated. It looks like something from 2005 or maybe earlier. Yeah, it looks like Jumpstart. Anyways, there was the first ever lesson we took. The first ever I Ready lesson that we took in class was the one that had this red balloon with a face. And he teaches the alphabet. The f- this um lesson covered the letters A, B, C, D, and E. And when it got to the letter E part, and there was an... I knew what was coming at letter E. An elephant! And it trumpeted, and I started crying. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Not only that lesson, there was another lesson that um traumatized me. This time, it had a train character who kept whistling, and I, w- I was crying the entire time, and my teacher forced me to do the lesson when I didn't want to. I don't even remember what. I think it was math. I don't know. But yeah. It was that one. Yeah. And, uh... Um, uh, what was another one? Okay, this one, um, this one I remember was from first grade. Yeah, it was, um, this, I think I can, okay, so it was how to tell time. That was what the video was about, how to tell time. Like, if if you search up YouTube, on YouTube, um, and search, um, how to tell time for kids and you see the one with um m&m cookie as the thumbnail like cut into pieces that's the one we watched in class that video had not one but two triggers in it first in the part where it tells about um we wake up at 8 a.m in the morning the rooster crow pops up Then, later in the video, the, um, the part where, um, they were telling a story on how to memorize the times better, and Santa giving the candy to the kids, the kids cheering sound popped up! My gosh! So when the rooster crow popped up, I was already upset and I told the teacher to turn the video off, but she won't listen. Then, the kids cheering sound part popped up, and I was crying my eyes out. The teacher and the students tried to make me feel better by doing, um, okay. So this one kid said, let's go to a time machine and go back to the time where we didn't watch it. And then the teacher Played along and said, hooray, we didn't watch the video at all. But that didn't help me. I was still upset. <laughs> I, yeah. And, um, what was another thing that traumatized me? Okay, this one's not school related. I was at home. There was this, um, thing on Netflix. It was like this fairy tales or I don't know, story time thingy. It was, um, it was a thing called, um, something's gift. I don't know. It had, like, a black boy, and he, um, I don't know. I don't even know, remember what the story was about. Because I stopped the story, I stopped watching it after this part came up. Okay, so it started with, um, there was, like, a lady, and then there was kids, and then she, um, she, um, I don't know, then she decides to tell a story, 
call she decides to because it's like a framing device like she's gonna tell the story to the kids and then it goes animated okay and right when the story started like right at the beginning of the story it started with a freaking rooster crowing in the morning and he crowed not once but three times i think he crowed, like, multiple times. Several times. Yeah, and I was crying. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Another thing. Little Einsteins. So, I think you all know what Little Einsteins is. So, anyways, um, there was this one episode called Annie Get Your Microphone. Like, Annie has to go to the singing contest or something and she i don't know like someone steals big jet steals her microphone i think but anyways when they got to the singing competition there were two other contestants that were participating an elephant and a train and they both trumpeted and whistled it was a double trigger and i I had a meltdown after that. Which is why I don't like Little Einsteins. Because it traumatized me when I was little. Yeah. And what was another thing that traumatized me? Let's see. Something I... Mm, what was it? Oh, Yeah at church so nowadays i mean i go to thrive church i thrive is the church that i started going to in like 2016 or 17 because my first church was gci grace communion international but now i go to thrive um so in my early days in thrive like one of my first few days since we were like kindergartners or preschoolers like i don't know the preschooler section gets to watch this show on the tv that is christian the tree house or something or join the clubhouse and it had this owl character and there was this part where um i don't know there was this part where saying something is king i don't know it was like a bible character saying he is king and then it had the kids cheering sound and i was triggered and i was crying (sighs) oh yeah oh yes now i remember now i remember it was also at church i was that at thrive That was when I was introduced to the most despicable, evilest toy that I've ever seen in my life. That toy is... The CNC! Oh my gosh. I mean, like, in the other... In the other side of the room where the preschoolers were, I kept hearing, like, random farm animal noises, and I was wondering where it was coming from. And it was coming from my brother, Peanut, playing with a CNC. Oh, my gosh. And I was so freaking scared of that thing. I didn't want to get close to it. I wanted to run away. Yeah, guys, I I have, like, a deep hatred for CNCs. CNCs are literally one of the most evilest toys I've ever seen in my life. They're even worse than Jack in the Boxes, which play Pop Goes the Weasel or sometimes another nursery rhyme or whatever in it. But CNCs are worse. Because not only does it have the rooster crow when it when it goes on the rooster, but 
It also might have Muo 2 in it in the modern versions because CNC came out in 1960s. Muo 2 didn't exist at the time, but the more modern versions, they probably do have Muo 2. And there's even nursery rhyme CNCs and they and more. It's like there's basically so many versions of CNCs. There could be any triggers in it. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And also another time at church. It was also from church. I don't know. We were like reading a story. I think it was like a Bible verse about God creating the animals or something. And then we got to the part where, and we had to act out the story. And then we got to the part, God created the elephants or something. And then everyone around me started imitating the elephant trumpet. And I cried and I ran out of the room. I was so freaking traumatized. <sighs> And another one. What's another one? Um. Uh. What was it? Oh my gosh, now I remember. Beat Bow and Beat Bell. The, I think it was Fisher Price that made them. It was a toy. I kept watching video. I used to like them. But after watching this one video of someone playing with the toy... I started hating them. It was a someone playing with a beat bell toy, and then she um she said, "You can count on me," and started counting from one to five. And when she reached five, the kids cheering sound popped up. And no, it was not like a sound that was edited into the video. It was actually coming from the toy. Which means, Beat Bow and Beat Bell actually use the kids' cheering sound effect in their toys. Oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah. And what was another one? Um, what was it? Oh my gosh. Now I remember. My uh, my grandpa, my abuelito, he used to play this nursery rhyme channel for us called El Reino Infantil, or the Children's Kingdom in Spanish. Which, by the way, already gr glazes that channel to death. Like, seriously, he, like, he loves the characters and makes rip-offs of my shows with them in it. Anyways, yeah, that channel... I actually watched that channel as a kid yeah, because my grandpa... My grandpa's from Colombia, so he speaks Spanish, so he showed us the nursery rhymes in Spanish. And... My least favorite characters were Bartolito from Zenon's Farm... And blasts from zoo songs for obvious reasons. Because they were a rooster and an elephant. I hated when they were in the songs and I would cover my ears because in some songs they trumpeted and crowed. I freaking hated them. Like, there was this one song where... Um, I think it was the hippopotamus song where um, Blast trumpeted at the camera. And another song focusing on Bartolito himself where he... Um, the song is about um, him trying to crow, but he keeps sounding like a different animal every time until he crows correctly at the end. I freaking hated that song. Another song is, um, uh, oh yeah, um, Abuelito didn't only play El Reino Infantil, he also played some other channels, and I think there was this one channel, this, um, they made their version of, there's this nursery rhyme in Spanish called 
one elephant jumping on a spider's web. It's kind of like five little monkeys jumping on the bed, except you count it's you count up instead of counting down. Like like um instead of the monkey falls off and bumps his head, the elephant asks another elephant to come join him until there are like a bunch of them and they break the spider's web. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they um they, they he played this channel's version and there was an elephant that trumpeted at the camera in the beginning of the song. Oh my gosh, I hated that. And I ran upstairs crying. Oh my gosh. Uh, what is another one? What's another one that, like, um, I remember, um, what was it? Oh, yeah. This was actually pretty, um, not too long ago. I think it was only, like, a few years ago when my mom was getting into K-pop. There was this BTS song called Idol. Not to be confused with the opening theme song of Oshinoko. No, BTS's song Idol is a different song. But I don't like that song. Want to know why? Because... So I'm okay. Don't get me wrong. I actually like BTS. I just don't like their one song Idol because after the um right like after the first verse right before the pre-chorus, one of the members imitates the train whistle. Yeah. And I got upset. <sighs> And another one would have to be, um, okay, um, it was at, it was at school, it was, um, it was in sixth, sixth grade, we, I used to take Spanish class, but not anymore after how much they babied us there, so I have my Spanish teacher, played this video um it was called um the days of the weeks days of the week in spanish from señor jordan jordan i don't know señor jordan uh, so um he's like a guy who teaches spanish but he does it through nursery rhymes like seriously and he is also accompanied by this creepy puppet guy named Lucas. He looks so freaking creepy. He looks like, um, he looks like, um, Ernie from Sesame Street if he was on drugs. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, and in this one video they showed us, called The Days of the Week in Spanish, they sang a song about the days of the week to the tune of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. And I got upset, and I was annoyed. And even worse, after the video, they played the video, there was even one student singing it. And I got even more annoyed. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, because I'm going to save the times the kids, the kids at school were bullying me. I'm saving that for another video. So yeah, guys, those are a couple of examples of my misophonia trauma from my childhood. Well, I'm still a, I'm a teen. I mean, does that count as ch still a child? But anyways, like from when I was younger. Yeah, guys, <sighs> hope you enjoyed the video. Credit to Pippin for the inspiration for this. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.